let me give an example of, of how well we used to know this. You, you know, the, the, the painting you showed of Washington crossing the Delaware, this, this little jewel right here. You mentioned that this is Oliver Cromwell, and, and he, he is, but up here are Prince Whipple, but the other one's Oliver Cromwell. There's actually two blacks in the front of that boat, and they served not as slaves. They were free men who served with Washington on the general staff throughout the revolution from start to finish. Now, this painting that you showed was done in 1851 by a German, mm -hmm. and it was done in Europe. It wasn't done in America. It was done in Europe to show the Europeans, here's what the American Revolution looked like, which meant back then we knew blacks were involved. Whites were involved. At the back of the boat, there's actually a, a lady dressed up in men's clothes. Yeah, put showing. this back up. Put, this, put, put the uh, uh, George Washington crossing the Delaware over. Um, because I, I find it interesting because I, I, I looked into the, the history of this uh, as well. See, so they believe <coughs> what he did was... Go ahead and point I, it I out. heard this, right. is the, this is the lady, but who are you saying? Right there, right there. The, that's the lady? Right here. Right there. Yeah, and yeah, and okay. the two guys up front, uh, the very front guy, Oliver Cromwell, and you pointed to Prince Whipple behind him there. I mean, the, the, this was done to show Europe, hey, here's what America did in the revolution. Right. Everybody came together. We don't show that today. I mean, it used to be that we knew. This, this book right here is an old textbook from 1855. It's a great book. It's written by a black historian, a first black appointed federal office. It's called The Colored Patriots of the American Revolution. Now, we studied that as a textbook. That is not a skinny little book that, that we have there. I mean, there's a lot of patriots in the American Revolution that we studied. I read black the, patriots. I read the book um, Giants and was uh, just amazed, just amazed at this man, Frederick yeah. Douglass. Incredible guy. We don't really even know. Most people can say, I think the audience would say, yeah, I can reckon, I know that's Frederick Douglass, but you're not really sure. He looks kind of just like a black Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you're, you're like, I don't really know his story, I think. Am I right saying that or not? You kind of know him, but you're not sure why. Right, Tell we have, story. we've got a movie about Malcolm X, right? Mm -hmm. Movies about Martin Luther King Jr. And for some reason in American history, we think that the only time blacks stood up for their rights was when Martin Luther King decided to leave the pulpit and hit uh, right. the stump, uh, the, uh, hit the stump to make speeches. Uh, the bottom line is for the longest time we've adopted this victim narrative about blacks in the United States that the only role they played was a victim to white majority oppression. When I teach my course on black American politics I always stress to my students that when we talk about King and the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s, we need to call it the modern civil rights movement because blacks yeah. from before the yeah. revolution yeah. were pressing, prudently pressing for their rights. American history could be described as one long civil rights struggle. Our first Emancipation Proclamation, Declaration of Independence. That's right. right. That's right. It was, but it was, it was, it, it's been this way. It's going on now. It's going on. It's, it's, it's people trying to grab others' rights. And, and that never changes. That's that's human, human history. Nature. That's yeah. human history. Yeah. If I ask the audience, um, when did America have its first African American judge? What year would you say? Anybody, take a guess. Judge. Eighteen sixties. Anybody? Seventeen. About Seventeen. Seventeen seventy. Seventeen seventy. Amy, is that just a wild guess? It, no, it's not. I wasn't sure exactly, but I think it's about. Seventeen seventy. Tell me. Seventeen sixty-eight. Wentworth Cheswell, New Hampshire, elected to office in New Hampshire. He was re-elected for the next forty-nine years. Held eight different political positions. Really cool story uh, about him is we all know that Paul Revere made his midnight ride. We also know he wasn't the only guy riding that night. Mm -hmm. Another guy riding went with Chesel, black and white riding. Now, how side side. is it possible? Did you know that we had an African American ride to say the British are coming, the British are coming? Yeah. <laughs> Amy sure. did. did. Amy did. Anybody else besides Amy know that? Two, three. Okay, three people in the audience. Yeah. He, that is, he, was, he was such a great guy, and we never hear about him because he rode north, and Paul Revere rode west. And Revere was going after Reverend Jonas Clark's church because that's where Hancock and Adams were, was, was him. And that's where we had blacks and whites, as you pointed out, laying on the ground after that battle. Wentworth Cheswell rode north telling people the British are coming. And it was from the north that all those people came to Boston to take on the British at Bunker Hill and everywhere else. So we don't hear about his ride because the British went west, and that's where all the action happened. But it was a couple of days later when all these people started coming 
and down from New Hampshire and Vermont and elsewhere, and that's where he had written, telling him what was up. Lucas, when we, when we come back, I want to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want you to tell me a little bit about, um, a, a little bit of, uh, about Frederick Douglass. Sure. Um, uh, I, you know, the, the, the opening of Giants is, is so captivating, where you see a man who has struggled, um, uh, who was kept, I mean, it sounds horrible to say, but kept in, I guess, nice slavery, if there's such a thing. How would you describe how he... Well, he, he didn't grow up as, as a slave in the deep south, the deep cotton states. So, I mean, this, the phrase, being sold down the river, that has an actual historical connection. To be wow. sold down the river was the worst thing because you went from something pretty bad to awfully bad. <laughs> right, okay. So, a slave in Maryland is not as bad as being a slave down in the Delta. And what happened to his family where he was originally held? Because they sold him. They sold him. He never knew his siblings. Um, met his mother or knew, had vague memories of his mother maybe a few times. He remembers her calling him my little Valentine and that's why he dates his birthday February 14th, but he doesn't have a birth certificate. He doesn't know when he was born. Okay. We think February 18, uh, 1818. Okay, so he was in, um, you know, uh, a slavery that was um, northern slavery, but then uh, he was sold into horrible, horrible conditions and he witnessed for the first time somebody's whipping him and he's like whoa 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 what is this all about and um, and it wasn't too much longer that he's sitting and having a conversation with Abraham Lincoln because he was so impressive we'll tell you that story coming up in just a second